Alexandra, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I am so excited to collaborate with you and have this discussion with you. You are one powerful lady, and I knew that the moment I met you. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, and you have been on the journey since COVID in establishing your business and growing it to now launching your first book. So much is underway for you, and I just can't wait to dive in and really let it be known, your story and your mission, so much that you're offering to business owners and women out there. I'd love for you to just give a highlight of your background and your story, and we can take it from there. Absolutely. Thank you. I really appreciate being on. I, I love podcasts, and just anytime I can tell my story, it's always exciting. So um, from a high level, I um, I moved to South Florida for 9-11, uh, actually. I moved that following month. So I tell you this because I've made some real courageous moves in my life. And when I spoke over the weekend, it reminded me of how many I really have made. So um, I moved here as a single mom uh, with my two boys and took on a big role with, uh, at the time I was working for Enterprise, right out of school, that was my first job. So there was a huge opportunity here in South Florida. I had just gotten divorced and I says, you know something, let me do it. So I moved to South Florida, I had no family, two boys, just they were little at the time, um, you know, four and uh, six. And again, no family and made it happen, right? So I started connecting with um, just different organizations and really starting to get my name out there. But then um, years went past, you know, passed by and I started, get, I got into the commercial real estate and construction space. And that's where I really started thriving. Um, I, I worked for several different companies and um, most recently I worked for Best Roofing. Uh, obviously it's a roofing company. And um, another courageous move I made there was um, right before COVID, uh, you mentioned about COVID earlier, right before COVID, uh, it was October of 2019, I decided to uh, go on my own and better myself, right? So I decided to better myself, gave my notice and left a huge opportunity because I was on a senior senior level in, in the company and um, left Four months later, COVID happened. <laughs> and what do you do? So that's when I kind of had to uh, tap into my network and really uh, say, Alex, what are you going to do? You left. You got to keep moving forward. You bet on yourself. And it's time to put your networking and your all the seeds that you've planted to, it, to the test, right? And that's exactly yeah. what I did. So um, I started, of course, a um, online mastermind class. I, I, I started from a place of like more service. I wanted to give back to my community and really help those who were, that were struggling, even though I was in a little bit of a shock, but I just mentioned how I moved here with two kids, right? From Connecticut to uh, Florida by myself. So I already had that resilience. I'm, I already, my, I'm, I'm used to doing hard things, right? So I've taken so many courageous moves uh, during my life. So that was just like another one. So I kind of shifted a little bit and was really more wanting to help others that were just like, I'm going to lose my job. So I went into, like I said, just wanted to serve and give back and started helping those that unfortunately um, didn't know where to go, what to do because of, think about it, uh, when they said we were, we were stuck home and we couldn't see people, I was said to myself, are you kidding me? I'm a networking queen and I've built my, <laughs> I've built my company. I built my, 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 my brand, right. Through networking. Now you're telling me I can't have conversations with people anymore. So that was really a pivotal moment for me. And you, you grow through those things, right. You really grow and you, you, you realize what works and what doesn't, but yeah, a little bit of a high level of how I ended up in South Florida and how I got into my networking <laughs> for you. And how did you gather those people and, you know, really put that mastermind together? So we would, we picked a date. It was Tuesday, 1 p.m. So it's, you know, obviously it wasn't 50 people at once. It grew. And the more I was helping five people, the five people told others and said, oh my gosh, you should join this mastermind. 
So we did pick a specific date on when we would meet. And what I did also to keep the, you know, the, 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 the mastermind going was I would invite other speakers to join me with um, different topics, right? So things that we were all struggling with. Uh, digital marketing was a huge piece. It, you know, the whole world kind of shifted. I also, on a side note, I ended up going back to FAU uh, just because I said, Alex, your your business is getting really, you know, ready to shift. I own a marketing firm and we do offer digital services, but now I see how the world was going to shift a little bit more on the digital side. So I wanted to kind of dust off, you know, dust off whatever I knew. And I said, okay, Alex, time to kind of go back to school, which was also difficult, right? Wow. At my age, going back to school and, you know, taken away from my family. It was, you know, mm-hmm. it was, a, it was a, definitely a course where it was pretty uh, intense and I had to get it done pretty quickly. But yeah, so we would bring different people to, um, to, to speak on different topics. And, it, you know, one of the biggest topic was lead generation. And through COVID is where I actually uh, came up with a new program within my business offering lead generation to co- for, for businesses. So we spoke about how to, you know, get on the phone and, and having those high level conversations with your, um, your, your ideal clients and how to sell without sounding like a salesperson. Right. So each, every week it was uh, a new topic. It was a fresh topic, a new speaker, and we really got people excited. And what it did also just, of course, teaching, right. It was educating and it made people feel safe. You know, it made the people that were panicking feel like, okay, If something did happen to me in this current position, look at all the resources and look at all the stuff I'm learning that I can apply and go anywhere. So that was really rewarding to be able to give back to the community and having them feel safe and feeling safe with anything is so important, right? So that was rewarding. I remember where I was during that time. I was actually in the beauty industry working for a um, distribution company. And then when COVID hit, All of our sales went from in-person retail to overnight e-commerce. And gosh, (laughs) in a startup environment, you are wearing many hats. So I was tasked with, how do I do this now? My team is relying on me. What are the strategies we're going to put into place? And our customer at the time, um, they were nail salons, which were closed 100%. Mm. So how do you, as a distributor, remain in front of your client who's not making an income now. And so we were very mindful of that um, and instead pivoted to showing up every day online, uh, educating and providing free workshops, how to master and perfect their craft, you know, through the utilization of all of our product lines. And Mm -hmm. so every day we showed up on social media, um, we did an hour long live, we brought on guests, love brought it. clients, influencers. We brought on, you know, folks that were, you know, using the products for a very long time. And then we started teaching classes around it. And then we started doing virtual expos and virtual trade shows and did a whole day's worth of love it. training. And it really, in hindsight, grew the brand as well as the community. And it started to get the name out there in one of the toughest years in history for the beauty industry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it was just one of those things where it felt good to give back in a way sure. that you're educating and helping, you know, your customers perfect their craft for their business. Cause they're mm-hmm. also business owners and to do that in a way, which they're also feeling that they can make good use of their time. Right. right? And they don't know what to do. And sometimes you need to be led. So you know, like you, you created a community where people could join and mm-hmm. feel like they're being led in a productive direction yeah. that's going to help them propel through this time period. Because it's not that we came out of COVID and went back no. to what things were. <laughs> we came out of COVID, evolved and transformed, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and now fully integrated in sure. this digital era, which is here to stay. Yeah, it's and it's and it teaches all of us. It's all the power of the mindset, right? You know, we can do anything and together we could even do more. Right. And I think that is one thing that COVID taught everybody that like coming together, right, where we can accomplish. I mean, things are always going to happen. Right. There's always going to be something. And it's to have that mindset to get past that, uh, whatever it is that you're, you you know, you have going, don't don't lose sight on like your goals or your, 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 your dreams because something is going on. 
it's it's be able to pivot and figure out what else can I do and there's always something great that comes out of it and for me and for you I know like I said I created new programs within my business and really promoted myself as well as someone that can give back there's always something good that comes out of you know something bad absolutely Mm -hmm. I'd love to unpack that mindset you were referring to because entrepreneurship is all about ups and downs. As a business owner, you you have to determine how to keep that steady pace mm-hmm. and not let what's happening around you or in the economy bring you down to the point where it, it literally drives your business down with you. So mm-hmm. what are some of the mental practices you put in place for your own business and things that you share with your clients and how to maintain that steady, fast you know, mindset and, you know, overcoming those ups and downs of entrepreneurship. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a question I get asked all the time because I, you know, I'm always, how do you stay motivated? How do you keep going? Uh, Number one is I I say, have a meeting with yourself daily. You know, that's the most important meeting of the day. We run away from ourselves, right. In terms of like what's going on. So having that meeting to really uh, understand what's happening in your business, you just can't keep going, going, going. And being strategic, right? Being strategic of what's going on and keeping your goals and your vision, right, in front of you. That to me is where you don't lose sight. So how do, how do you stay motivated as an entrepreneur is number one, believing in you, believing in your dreams. And, uh, you know, it's something that you almost, I don't want to say I can't teach it, right? But I can teach people to believe in themselves. And that's my goal. My passion is to bring out the power within people, right? People we all have are gifted so many different strengths and uh, we have power within us. And sometimes with what's going on, we lose sight of it. So you have to hold on to your belief, right? What do you want to do? What are your goals? And that to me is what motivates me. What gets me up in the morning and say, okay, I love what I do, right? It's believing. And and sometimes if you ask that question to yourself, maybe you're not doing the right thing, right? Maybe you're not in a position where you really love what you do. And that's a whole different story. But if you truly love what you do, it's so funny, I had a conversation yesterday with an incredible woman who uh, is starting a new business and she's hiring my my, my firm uh, to, to, to do some consulting and you could just hear the passion. And she's got, my gosh, three different lives. Like she's done so many different things. And I could just hear the passion in her voice. And I said to her, I says, this is your motivation <laughs> right here. I'm going to come in and help kind of structure your brand and help you really align your, you know, your, your brand with your mission and vision. But you have that passion and drive within you. That's what's going to wake you up every morning. And that's what's going to push you even when things are difficult, right? That's, that is what's going to push you. And that to me is something that you'll have when you're doing what you're supposed to do, right? Right. Your, your dreams, when you're really doing what you love to do, no one has to push you, right? You push yourself. That's my motivation. I love what I do. It's so true. And when you are in that alignment, you almost want to push yourself to see what you're made of, right? Like, what am I made of? And now that I'm in this space, you, you get to determine that pace. Yeah. Well, so when I was, um, in a, in a, a role that I did not feel in alignment in, mm-hmm. um, and then there's many people that are in those roles because yeah. they say you have bills to pay. You have to put food in the table. You have to provide, right? You yeah. need to support yourself. So sometimes it doesn't come to you right away. And other times the opportunity presents itself and it's the right timing. Mm -hmm. So at that point where I was in this role and I knew it wasn't in this perfect alignment for me. However, there's still ways to make it so that you have that passion um, a part of your role. So for example, when I was networking and meeting, you know, going to networking events and meeting people to expand my own, you know, network, I would go and introduce myself to all the women in the room before even sure. introducing myself to a man strictly because there's always a you know five women in the room compared to the hundred people that there are right and so then I would create events strictly women only where I strategically brought you know one of every networking partner that I thought would have good synergy together mm-hmm. and that to me was very fulfilling and very purpose driven 
you know, was still very productive for business, but it gave me that sense of passion and purpose yeah. Yeah. that I'm, I'm creating a, a space essentially mm -hmm. for us women to connect mutually, you know, while I was in that position. So for people that aren't in alignment in what they're doing, there's still a way that you can show up for yourself and for others in the community with what you already have. Yeah. And it's identifying, you knew what you love, right? You knew like what you were passionate about and being surrounded by women and empowering them. That's something that was important to you. Even people in positions, like when I led a huge team, people would often say, Alex, you always make sure that you put people in the right position. I says, you know why? Because that's when they're going to thrive. That's mm -hmm. when they're going to work harder. So sometimes it's not even about leaving your company and being an entrepreneur. We're, not everyone's meant to be an entrepreneur, right? It's 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 a hard and I would say it's not for the weak <laughs> because every day it's a challenge. You've got to be strong. But um, with even your own business, what I love is is you there's still opportunities within whatever company you work for to move to a different position where you can contribute, right? If exactly. you don't feel like you're contributing to a business, then that's something you really need to look into because if you're struggling with that, you, you know, have that conversation. What do you like to do? And you can figure it out just having a conversation with your supervisor or yourself. More importantly, what do I want to do and find room within that company and, and do it. So mm -hmm. you don't necessarily, I just want to make that clear that you don't necessarily have to leave your company. Um, again, just what do you like to do? Right. We're all gifted a talent and it's just so, sometimes it's sad when I hear people, you're, you're navigating through this beautiful life that we're given, right? And to be able to not do what you love, it's sad, right? It's sad to me because mm -hmm. you only get one chance, right? You do. And, you know, I think a lot of business owners would be very open to their employees really creating something that would be beneficial to them and their business mm -hmm. if the opportunity was presented. So, sure. you know. People shouldn't be afraid to say, hey, I'm really passionate about this. Right. You know, how can I integrate that with my current role, right? And it'd be a win-win for everybody. Um, my gosh, you have so many strategies <laughs> in expanding your network and really stepping out of your comfort zone. Where did it spark to put all those pieces together and write the power of networking? My gosh, I've been, like I said, they call me the networking queen. That's something that I been so good at from just a really young age connecting with people so I'll share with you so I grew up in Connecticut as I mentioned I moved here from Connecticut to um, Florida but um my my mom passed away when I was 13 years old and a few years later my dad passed away so by the age of 16 I really didn't have any I didn't have any parents right but I did have family and some support but I was pretty much on my own and what I learned at that age was the importance of connecting uh, with people. So I found um, some incredible people. I think it's when I always say my mom left me that gift of being able to connect with people. Uh, I've met I met people that you know took a role as like a mentor or even a mother figure. So from a very young age, I knew what the power was in connecting with um, just the right people that can really help you. Uh, get to the next level with your career, your, your life. And that has something, that's something I just always did. And as I went into different corporations, I've always played that role of not just connecting with clients, but internal marketing, right? I would make sure that the company morale was good. And uh, we, you know, everyone got along. I was like, always found myself in that uh, making sure, uh, People wanted to work there, right? Wanted to work in that company and uh, provided uh, the right tools and resources and was the go-to person. And that was because of my ability to connect with others. So writing this book uh, was important to me. It was important to me for several reasons. One being that I believe that as humans, we have to connect with each other, mm -hmm. right? That's why we love up on people. We have friends. We're just naturally made that way to connect and we have such a power within us and a lot of people don't understand it so my goal was to get the word out right help people that are maybe 
a little timid or don't think networking uh, can can really help their career, can help their business. Uh, they can help them personally. I mean, there's so many things that networking can do, even personal development. You know, I learned so much by just having conversations with different people. They may not have been my client or could never buy from me, but just the information and the resources that these people had really helped shape some of the decisions I've made or connections I've made. So uh, this book was really, it, it's like a, I would say it's like a roadmap to success. It's not just about the traditional, oh, I'm going to talk about walking into a networking event and meeting people, whether it was a lunch or, or a dinner. It's a lot deeper than that. It's, it, mm -hmm. it's going to teach you how to run your business around the power of connections and networking. Absolutely. It's yeah. not, yeah, I've, I've read, you know, into the book and right. it's not your, it's networking is not as simple as passing a business card. That's, that's not networking. No. And so, you know, you actually talk about the difference between connecting mm -hmm. and networking in the right. book. And I'd love for you to share the difference because to me, they sound the same almost. And I, However, there's people I have a connection with and then there's people I'm certainly yeah. not working with. So there is a difference. Yeah. So I referenced the book. It's not who you know is who knows you for a reason, because that is the example right there. You could you have a group of networking alliances that you see often and, you know, go to events together and they know who you are um, in terms of like what company or they see you, they see your face but they really don't know what you do. So that is the difference. Now, connections is where now you've already built a rapport. They look at you as a trusted advisor. They look at you, the go-to person within your field. When they think of you or they think of a service that they need, it's you that's attached to it. To me, that is the difference. Genuine connection. You, you, they know about you um, and, and you're the go-to. All right. That, so I get people all the time when I'm training, I network all the time. I know so many people and I'm like, okay, great. And they're like, but why aren't they using my service? Because you're just, they're just your networking alliances. These are not real genuine connections. They don't know what you do. They don't even understand how you can help service them. And that's something that we don't stop to do. And a lot of business development managers fail from, they fail because they don't convert the networking contacts into true connections. And that's what the book really outlines is how to be able to get to the other side. Because we do spend so much time in organizations. I mean, I have children, a lot of us have family. And if you're gonna spend a few hours uh, a week in networking, you wanna make sure it, you know it's meaningful, it's impactful, you're leaving work, you're tired and you're getting ready to go to a networking event and you're just standing there or you're not like engaging and you're not being strategic. What's the point, right? What's the point? So I kind of talk about that as well on, you know, how to be very strategic and be where your clients are. It's great to visit some networking opportunities, but again, we all have the same amount of time in a day, you know, exactly. spend time with people that want to do business with you and they can help you grow within your career. And that's something that I learned very, very early on is being very strategic where I spend my time and being with the right people, being with the right people. Yeah. Yeah. When I was, um, uh, in corporate, that was something that was talked about all the time, right? Cause your, your job is to continuously expand your network. Right. So how do you maintain your existing relationships while continuing to add more? Yeah. Um, and so, you know, the first couple of months you're trying to figure out what are the right rooms to be in mm -hmm. to actually lead yourself to your ideal client. And then, you know, you establish those initial relationships, you recognize some new ones. And eventually I had to tell myself as my family grew and now my time became, you know, even more, yeah. more valuable when I'm out in the evenings, my intention, cause I could only have one hour. I can't sure. stay for duration of the event. So if I'm going, I have an hour. My intention is to meet three to five really good right. contacts. And, you know, meeting everybody is great. Yeah. But at the end of the day, if I can meet three to five really good contacts, perhaps two to three of those are going to flourish into a true connection. That's and right. 
that's what served me well during that time. And even still to this day, um, when I go to events and I'm meeting people, you know, it's not about being friends or connecting and adding alliances left and right. You want those true connections that are going to move the needle. Right. That's quality. Thing. Quality over quantity. Mm-hmm. And that's where, the, you know, everyone thinks that it's the, you know, you're, you're trying to get as many business cards as possible that's just going to sit on your desk. You're not realizing that, you know, have those meaningful conversations. You know, you never know that person could be your next big opportunity or that person could introduce you to your next big opportunity, right? So slow down and and have those meaningful conversations with people you meet and go back another time and meet another three to five people. But at that moment, don't scan the room and rush through it. You're not going to connect with people like that. You know, that's the difference between networking and connections. What would you say would be your top strategies in, you know, building a network? So let's say you're, you know, someone is new in their role or they're a new, you know, business owner and they haven't done this before or they're new and it's a different industry for them. So where would you say someone can start to build that network? Well, I would find a few organizations to get involved in first. That's the first thing. And once you get there, uh, you need to get on some kind of committee. Uh, You know, I wouldn't sign up for anything that I'm not going to be involved in. I mean, there's some networking events that you go to, but I would definitely find one or two that is connected. And that's where your ideal clients are going to be. And say, you know, put your hands up, say, I would love to jump on a committee. And trust me, every organization would love to have you. They love volunteers. And then um, start meeting people that can be a good referral source for you. So build your alliances. So one thing I did um, years ago and really helped me with my business and get more opportunities was I formed these networking alliances. So I picked five people uh, that I met and I said, okay, let's do a networking um, group, right? Outside the whole organization, where once a month, you'll just host like a happy hour. So now you're expanding. You're expanding the day-to-day opportunities where you just go to an organization. You're not building your name, right, for yourself because you're inviting, uh, you'll, you'll, you know, you say there's the five people. Each one of them are inviting two to three of their co- customers. Now you get to meet their customers as they meet yours. So you start expanding. So that is a strategy that I use all the time because it's less um, in, intense, right? It's it's just on. It's easy to put together. It's very cost effective, and also you get your ROI because you get the opportunity to meet these other. Say there's five, including yourself. These other four vendors that are going after the same type of customer as you, but now you get to meet their clients that could potentially be your client, and it's more in a an environment where it's just chilled. It's not like you know, a big event where you get lost. This is your event. So that to me, if you get anything out of this podcast today, write that down because that was a game changer for me in my career. And I just started getting business, like nonstop business. Yeah, form these alliances, pick four or five people that you can um, join forces with and start creating your own little networking opportunities. I love that. Love that. Little Great. secret sauce for you all today. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It is, it truly is about, you know, taking what it is that you're a part of and then creating something of your own mm-hmm. and being able to further develop that, right? Yeah. You need to cultivate those relationships. Um, and you look like a leader, right? You also are demonstrating leadership, right? For these people, they're like, oh, you're part of these five, you know, alliances or you're part of this networking alliance. This is great. So you're looked a little different because now you're putting something together on your own and you're giving back to these um, clients that are coming. So, yeah. Yeah. It's and it goes different. on to building your confidence and, and so much. So actually you mentioned something early on um, when it came to starting your own business out of 2020 and that was betting on yourself. Yeah. And so I feel like a lot of people are afraid to bet on themselves because they yeah. don't believe in themselves. They don't trust themselves and to do the things that you're saying, you you have to have a little bit of that discipline and that confidence to yeah. bet yourself that these people can rely on you as much as you're going to be relying on them in a sense. 
how do you maintain that confidence in continuing to expand your business on, on betting on yourself? How, where did that develop for you? I mean, it, there, it's so many layers to it just because it, I believe that having that confidence and believing yourself, it's also part of like your, your, your story, your journey, right? So, um, you, everything you go through, you, you're building yourself and, you know, you become like these soldiers, right? You're like, you become tough and strong and you just, um, and it, it, you just keep betting on yourself. You keep believing because you, once you do it, you know, it's like my, the saying I always say is show up scared, right? I say that in every presentation and I say it because that is part of what you're talking about, betting yourself. Most people are so afraid because they think that they're not good enough or they can't do it. So I say, show up scared because if you keep showing up scared, then you will no longer be scared. So pick something and show up scared. The next time you're not going to be scared and you just keep doing it. So it's constantly believing in yourself and putting yourself really in situations that are uncomfortable. See, the problem is a lot of people, what they do is they continue to put themselves in the same situations because it's very comfortable. So when they say they don't believe in themselves because you haven't put yourself in a situation where you, you, you're scared or you, you feel uncomfortable. And the more you do that, you know, I, I work out a lot. So I, I you know, athletic people kind of have that kind of mindset, right? Because if you're, you know, you're benching, whatever, you know, a woman, 20, 25, 30 pounds, you're always looking to do more and get uncomfortable. None, none of it is comfortable, right? But it's pushing yourself and learning to have that discipline to push yourself to always be uncomfortable. So my thing is, I want to be uncomfortable all the time because that is what separates me, right? Because if I'm comfortable, then how am I growing? And if I'm comfortable, how can I continue to break down these barriers and, and continue to go for what I want? I'm not going to get there. And the only way to get there is, again, betting on yourself, believe in yourself, and just be uncomfortable. I promise yeah. you, it, you're uncomfortable just for a little short time because mm -hmm. that's just in the beginning. You're going to keep going and keep making yourself uncomfortable. And once you realize like, wait, this uncomfortable feeling is just, it's, it's short. It's not long. It doesn't last long. And once you get past it, you want to, you want more. So that is how I've always done it. I've never looked to be comfortable. I just wow. knew like I need it. I want to grow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's wow. always something that's going to happen, right? To distract you. And that's the conversation we had in the beginning, right? Of mm -hmm. things are going to happen. How do you pivot? And again, it's, once you are uncomfortable and you believe in yourself and you're like, I'm unstoppable, nothing is going to get in my way regardless that things are going to happen. It's what, how you handle it, right? How do you handle these things that happen to you? It's all mindset. It is. Kind it all back in, right? All mindset. Yeah, all mindset. I mean, your drive to grow is greater than your fear of staying the same. And so many people let that fear consume them to the point where they can't see the end of the tunnel, the light, because they're so consumed in their fear. Yeah. How do you tell that lower state of mind, those lower vibes to take a backseat? Yeah. Just, again, it goes <laughs> tying into, I mean, I, I would never sit here and tell you that I, I, I don't fear things. I do every day. And I work through them, right? And that is like, okay, is it real? Is it real? Asking yourself and then saying, what could really happen? to me. And a lot of times it's what we put in our heads. Like, I feel like fear, we weren't, I don't think we were, this is my opinion. I, I don't think we were as humans, we were not meant to fear things. I don't feel like that's how we were wired. And fear is something that we're taught in a, at a very young age. I'm a mother. Uh, I know you are. And this is something we teach our children, right? So we were taught this, like, be careful, you're going to get hit by a car or don't cross the street. Oh, don't go by the pool or, oh my gosh, go to school and be careful. Don't talk. We're constantly feeding the human mind with fear because something bad is going to happen. So I think that to me, that is what fear, where fear comes from. So as an adult, you're con you know being fed this your entire life, uh, you start either fear of public speaking or fear to go for that promotion or fear of, uh, you know, opening up that new business. There's always your worrying, your fear. So again, back to mindset, you know, sit down with yourself and say, okay, is this really fear? Like I'm afraid, but what could really happen? <laughs> okay. You fail. 
guess what? What did you learn from it? You know, and that's the way I always look at it. If it doesn't work out, there's always going to be a lesson, right? And that lesson could be what I needed for my next move. Can I get an amen? Right. You know what I mean? That lesson could have been exactly what I needed for my next move. And you would never know until you lose. You'll never know, right? So fear, I'm like, if I, when I feel, I'm like, get out of here. You know, welcome in my mind. Because we can't control it from coming. Again, back to we were taught that from a very young age. You can't control it from coming in, but you can control it getting it the hell out, right? It's up yeah. to you. It's okay, noticing it. Why am I not going after my dreams? Why am I not doing what I say I'm going to do? Because I'm scared. Okay, what, what do I think is going to happen? Nothing, because you, you're afraid of failing. You're afraid of what people are going to say. Listen, life is short. Go do what you were meant to do in this world. Go and get it. And like I said, Go be uncomfortable. Being yeah. uncomfortable <laughs> is how you grow. Being uncomfortable is how you get what you want in life. Yeah. That was so good. You know, someone said this to me a very long time ago, and it was, if there was no fear, no judgment, and no criticism, and no way of really feeling, what decision would you make? Yeah. Right? What would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? Yeah. And the first answer that comes to your mind is exactly what you should go and yeah, do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then okay. showing up as that person. And that's a whole other thing, right? Mm -hmm. So whatever it is that you want to do, you have to live it. You can't just want to do it, right? Yep. You got to show up as that person every day. And that's something I talk about all the time in my presentations because um, for women specifically, we're always worried about like, what are they going to say? Or who's, you know, worried about, no, show up as that person in the future, right? That's how you get it. Because how do you see yourself there, but you can't walk and talk it? No, you got to walk, you got to talk it, you got to see it, you got to believe it. And that's how Xandra Marketing came. I saw it. So I lived it. People were like, oh my gosh. And I was working for, as I said, Best Roofing at the time. And then I just completely rebranded myself and I separated myself. And I knew because if I wanted Xandra Marketing to be a name, I had to walk it, talk it, breathe it. I mean, people were like, girl, you're acting like you've been here for 50 years. I said, that's right. Mm -hmm. I, I made my brand so big. People were like, I feel like you've always worked there. Yeah. Because I believed in myself so much and my brand that when it was showcased, when I walked into a room, they knew I was. They knew wow. my company. Yeah. And that's the way you do it. You have to, you have to, and that's believing wholeheartedly of your, your whole entire yeah. package. It's not just a piece. I got the logo. Okay, great. I got the mission statement. Okay, great. What are you going to wear? How are you going to show up? Where are you going to go? How are you going to act? Are you going to answer the phone? How are you going to email people? What does that look like, right? And I talk about that in my book as well, is what's your brand story? What's your personal brand? See, people forget about that and they wonder, like, people know me, but they're not doing business with you. Yeah, because you're just showing up, but you're not showing out. Show up and show out so they know and remember you. That's exactly. Your brand. Yeah. So, so good. Wow. I think that there is so much value in the conversation we've been having here that business owners, you know, business developers can take away from. Yeah. And even if you're not working a part of a company or even if you're not a business owner, no. there's still so much to take away from and expanding your network and your connections within your community, whatever it is that you do and how to step out and into your known purpose. I want to take a moment and reflect on that moment for you when you knew that you were made for more. Yeah, that was right before I left. Yeah. Um, my corporate, you know, company, I was like, I just, I, I, 
I kind of always knew that, you know, I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I come from a family of several entrepreneurs. Um, didn't really know my father well, but I do believe in genetics. I'm like, it's, it's in me. So I learned that my father was like, on top of being a singer, he was all, he owned like three or four different like businesses. And my mom was also an entrepreneur. So uh, I knew it was in me, but the moment where um, I really recognized it was, like I said, it was in 2019 where I looked at where I was at, right? And I had it all. I had the big office, the glass office, great um, compensation plan. I had a company car, credit. I had the, the perks, right? I had it all. And I just looked and I just knew I, I wanted to do more. And and that is, to me, is so important. It doesn't matter, right? Uh what you have, right, in a sense, you got to be fulfilled within your heart, right? I there's There was a piece of me that still was not full, regardless, everyone looked, oh, Alex is, no, I wasn't full. So that moment, I'm like, I need to do more. I want to help more people. I want to do what I did for this company to several other businesses. I want to, I want to see more businesses succeed. I want to be able to expand, um, what I learned and um, where I'm at to not just business owners, but to more people. And I knew that only way I could do that is to be on my own. Mm -hmm. And that was the moment that changed everything. It changed um, my business. It changed my brand. Um, and then I went into like, of course, uh, writing the book. But yeah, that was the moment. And those meetings with ourselves... <laughs> <laughs> it is powerful. If you are not having a meeting with yourself daily, please put it in the calendar uh, because that is the most important meeting. We get so caught up in the day to day and we forget to love up on ourselves. We forget to really tune in on like, who, what do we want? And just take that temperature of like, where am I at? Am I good? <laughs> do I feel good? Do I like what I'm doing? Do I, how does this feel? And we just keep going and we keep going and life keeps going and years keep going. And that's not good for you, right? That's not good for you. So put that meeting uh, for yourself. I'm a morning person. Mine's in the morning. Every morning I meet with myself. It's the best meeting of the day. I'm a little feisty sometimes, but we get through it. <laughs> we get through it. But um, yeah, it's the best meeting of the day. I recommend if it's, a, you know, a lunchtime, whatever you want to do, set that meeting with yourself. You'll learn so much. You'll learn so much. And you'll really start taking an inventory of like what's going on, you know, of where are you? So I did that a lot. And I think that really opened up a lot of opportunities for me. And that was how I was able to hear that was time. And, and, and that changed my life. You know, sometimes yeah. there's too much noise. We can't hear. So spend some time with yourself. There's always, you know, clarity that's taking place because you're brain dumping, you're processing, you're unloading, mm -hmm. you're closing out the tabs, you know, whatever it is that you're doing, whether you're just sitting by yourself, you have the journal in front of you, you're with the morning sun, whatever it is that you're doing. Um, and a clear mind is one that recognizes on the outside what's for them and what's not for them. Yeah. But when you have a cluttered mind, you don't know what to do first and you let the waves then carry you. And so then the day goes by, then the week goes by and the month goes by and the year goes by and you don't know what you're doing because you're just being carried right along. Right. You're not actually the one with the paddle right. determining the direction and what you're going right. in. So I love that. And yeah. Yeah, thank you so much for this incredible deep dive conversation. I have goosebumps. It was so powerful. <laughs> so many good takeaways. The power of networking, as we've been talking about here, is out and available on Amazon. The link will be below in the show notes for you to grab your copy. It's a great read. I've been highlighting. I've been taking notes. So many good takeaways, and I'm a networker myself. So Thank you so much for stepping forward into your calling. Thank you for showing mm -hmm. up because the world needs more women like you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you.